Welcome to Come Hobby With Us. Today's video is on supplies for a beginner sewer crafter. Thank you for stopping by to watch my video today. Uh, this is a video that I actually put together for a friend of mine. She uh, is looking for a sewing machine that will most, mostly do craft projects. She is not interested in doing garment construction. She's not interested in embroidery, but she isn't interested in doing craft projects, even maybe some quilts. So we've searched online. We did quite a bit of research to find her just the machine she wanted that did what she needed, and she didn't pay for things she didn't need. We narrowed it down to two particular machines. Both of them were brother machines. And the reason we chose the one we did is because it also had an alphabet included, which she could use for monogramming on uh, collars and cuffs and she could, or a handkerchief, something like that. Now, uh, she, the other, one of the machines she was looking at, though, had a walking foot with it. And she said, well, I don't know. Should I get the, walk, the one with the walking foot or not? Now, here's what I told her. You can buy a walking foot to go on that other machine, but you will not be able to buy the alphabet to go on the other on the, the other machine that you were looking at. So get what you need in your machine. As far as the extras, you could pick those up along the way. And a walking foot, of course, is used for doing quilting. And I will show that in another video. But here is a picture of the machine she chose. If you'd like to skip the review of the sewing machine, look in the description area below and go directly to section one. <clears throat> Let me tell you about the Brother XR9550. It's a sewing and quilting machine and it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of sewing machines because it's very versatile and it's ready for all of your crafting adventures. This bad boy comes packed with 165 built-in stitches from basic to decorative, including an alphabet, making it perfect for both sewing and quilting projects. There is a wide table that gives you plenty of space to handle larger pieces of fabric. It makes quilting a, a, a breeze. And guess what? There is an um, automatic needle threader. Yes, yes, say goodbye to squinting and frustration. Threading your needle is now a piece of cake with this machine. Plus, it has a drop-in top bobbin, which makes for smooth sailing when it comes to changing a bobbin in the middle of a project. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's talk speed. This machine has adjustable speed control. So whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, you can set it just right for each project uh, and for your comfort. And with the start-stop button and the included foot pedal, you've got even more options of how you want to control your stitching. Uh, also, it has an LED light, uh, so it kind of helps you keep from having to squint your eyes uh, a whole lot. It's reliable, it's user-friendly, it's versatile, it allows you your, your creative spirit to create. In addition, the machine comes with eight different presser feet. You will get a zigzag foot, a buttonhole foot, a zipper foot, a button sewing foot, an overcast foot, a blind stitch foot, monogramming foot, and your quilting foot. Uh, in addition to, you get a hard cover for it, and you get an instructional DVD. As of February 2024, this machine was priced at $229.99 on Amazon. I will include a link uh, on both my page and the video. Thank you. Let's get back to our supplies. Okay, as we go through this video, there's going to be like four sections. So section one, I'm going to talk to you about your cutting needs, what you need to have on hand for your cutting needs if you're going to be sewing and crafting. Then I'm going to talk to you about the various notions, just general supplies that you're going to need, okay? And then we will talk about <clears throat> some fabrics uh, where you can find some. Stay tuned for all of the video because I'm going to tell you where you can find some free and cheap fabric, uh, inexpensive fabric. We don't want cheap fabric. We want good fabric, but we don't want to pay a lot for it. And I'm going to give you some, some little tips on that. 
Okay, um, we're going to also talk to you about, after that I have, but section four is just other things. Other things you might like to add to your sewing supplies. Uh, start out with a budget that you can and improve upon it as you go. All right, so let's move right on in to the first section. Okay, as we begin going over our list of supplies, and I'm, I'm going to follow my list so I don't forget anything, we're going to first talk about your cutting tools, okay? So here we have a number of our cutting supplies. First, the very first thing you need is a good pair of scissors. Now, these are, um, I'll put a link to these below if I can, and I'll also put a link on my web page, okay, which is comehobbywithus.com. All right, I use Ginger scissors. You are not gonna find any just like mine. I bought these at the quilt show uh, maybe 20 years or so ago, maybe more than that. They still cut just as sharp as ever. I strongly suggest you invest in a good pair of dressmaker scissors. They will save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble, and they will last you for years, as long as you don't let your husband have them to cut paper and other things with. Um, I have a link to a pair of Ginger scissors from Amazon that I would recommend. Now, if you can't afford some of these that are a little pricey, um, get the best that you can for now. And then as you um, your hobby grows, then you can invest in a really, really good pair. Now, like I said, these are I use these strictly for fabric. No one is allowed to use these for anything else. All right, so if they're cutting paper and maybe you're cutting out a pattern or whatever, get you a more inexpensive pair. These are just some Fisker scissors, and these are... I don't think there's a brand name on these. Uh, you can pick up some just utility desk scissors, office scissors, even at the local dollar store. Okay, so that'll, that's what you need on scissors. You will also need a small pair of embroidery scissors. Okay, now this is my favorite. It's a, and I do have a link for this, but any kind of small pair of scissors because there's times that you're going to need to get in there and clip some threads uh, and do some other things, uh, maybe near your needle and all that. And it's just very, very helpful to have um, a small pair of scissors. I love these little gold stork ones. Okay. Now, that is for cutting with our scissors, but at times you're going to want to cut with what's called a rotary cutter. Now, if you look, you'll see I have a few rotary cutters. This one usually goes here. This is my one of my favorites because I like pink and blues and yellows and I like brighter colors. Now, you're going to use this rotary cutter to cut fabric um, that you're going to have to have a self-healing mat. That's what my mat is down here. You, with that, you're going to want a some rulers. Now here's a couple of them and I, I think I have a link for this one. Uh, in section two we're going to talk about notions, a lot of the little odds and ends you're going to need around your sewing room. Of course the first thing you're going to need is some thread. Pick out some colors that you like but I do suggest you keep a lot of black and white thread on hand. I also recommend that you get a 40 weight thread as a beginner. This is good in the top part of your machine. You can also use this or a 60 weight in your bobbin. So in addition to those you're going to need bobbins of course. Now some bobbins will come with your machine but you may want to pick up some extra empty bobbins or you may want to do what I do and buy some pre-round bobbins. I keep lots of black and white pre-round bobbins on hand. But you're going to need some of these occasionally. I do have a link for the bobbin threads that I order in bulk. And they're, half of them are black and half of them are white. I do embroidery a lot, so those are convenient for me. On my list, a pin cushion or a magnetic tray. I have a magnetic tray around here someplace, but I don't know what I did with it. Uh, this is my pin cushion and it holds my pins. I have a pin cushion downstairs. Uh, I have a tray of pins over here next to my machine. Um, any kind of pin cushion will work, okay? But uh, you do want a pin cushion or some way to, to, to store your pins. In addition to that, sewing clips. These are just wonderful. 
So if we're sewing something and we're trying to hold our edges together, yes, we can pin them. Let's get a pin from over here. We can pin these. Well, sometimes, though, when you're pinning, say, a binding on a quilt, it gets thick and it gets harder and harder to put that in there. Well, instead of that, what we can do is we can use these little sewing clips, and it holds very good, and you don't stick in yourself. And as I uh, would maybe sew this, I can move them if I have them real close together. Usually. Something like that, even on your binding, would be good. It's not just your binding, but anything thick you're sewing, you wanted to hold it together. These clips are great. I have a link to these in the same little tin box that I have. I don't know what I did with my lid, but it's, it is here someplace. You're going to need some hand needles and I, uh, from time to time, and you're going to want to um, get an assortment. I have put some links in my uh, product list here for you so that... Uh, you can get a nice assortment. I've even put some links that where you can get some pins and some thimbles and you, some bundles where you can get different things. So, but you're going to occasionally um, need to do a little bit of hand sewing on your projects. So, make sure you have some nice sharp pins there for uh, needles for you. Let's talk about your sewing machine needles. Okay, you should have needles that came with your machine. But you probably didn't get but one or two. You're going to have possibly a double needle with your machine. And we will talk about using a double needles in another video and uh, the different kinds of needles. But to get you started, I only use organ needles. Now, the reason I use these is because all my machines are brother machines. And brother actually uses the organ needles in their factory to test their machines. So. These needles work real good with your machines if it's a brother. Now, if you have a different brand of machine, you might check and see what they recommend. Uh, but I have found these and I have no trouble with these. Now, I order 100 at a time and these are all size 11, okay? Uh, what do I recommend for you to get started? I would say, get, if you can get an assortment and get some 11s and 14s, you might want one 16 needle or something if you're gonna be doing some uh, heavy stuff. Uh, you can order needles that are for metallic thread. You can, but the, I talked a minute ago about uh, hand sewing. And when you hand sew, you know what? You're gonna need a thimble. Now, there are so many kinds of thimbles. There's your old standard metal thimbles. Love them. Take a look at the various thimbles and try them on. Uh, some will fit your hands better than others. I do have a link to a variety pack of thimbles. That way you could try several of them out. You will need a measuring tape. A standard measuring tape will be fine. Look for one that has inches on one side and centimeters on the other. It'll be a great help to you. But you're going to need some tape. Um, I use scotch tape a lot. Any brand, get it at your dollar store. I also use painter's tape, any brand, get it at your store, and um, I use this, sometimes it's to hold some pieces together. If you've downloaded a PDF file from something, it'll come in pages and you have to tape them together and um, you just use some scotch tape. Uh, you may want it to hold two pieces of fabric together. That's why I sometimes want painter's tape because it um, is a little stronger than the scotch tape. Okay, next on my list, let's go down. You're gonna need an iron and an ironing board. You can use an ironing pad, a wool pad. Hold on a moment. You can use this if you if you don't have a big ironing board and don't wanna buy one. These are great to have, and you can just iron right on top of them. Another thing is, we talked about the, um, we talked about your, um, cutting board for your for your rotary cutter you can get something like this and this one is also by June Taylor you can cut on one side you can flip it over and you can iron and press on the other side this one happens to be quilters cut and press 2 it's by June Taylor and I've had it forever um, but this is this is could be helpful for both your cutting mat and for your ironing board um, and 
most people will probably have an iron to get started but if you don't i show you the iron i have and i highly recommend it this is the iron i have and i really really love it it is a little bit high uh priced but uh use what you have and get something better when you can afford it if when you're ironing, sometimes you want to protect the fabric that you're actually ironing on. And so you need what is called an ironing cloth. Well, I'm going to tell you, any other piece of fabric that's an old piece of fabric, you can lay that on top of what you're ironing and iron right over and it's going to protect that. I found that an old pillowcase works great. But you may also need a Teflon ironing sheet, okay? Uh, I think you may even find these in dollar stores. I know Walmart carries them. I have a link on there for them. Now, when do you need this? When you're using some kind of sticky adhesive on your fabric. The Teflon sheet will help protect both your iron and ironing board from sticky substances when you're using on an iron-on backing. Another thing that you're going to need in your sewing supplies or chalk markers or chalk pencils, you can even use a piece of regular chalk. I happen to like using a tailor's chalk. It washes out fairly easily. There are also some pins that you can use that are air dry or heat will make them disappear. I have a link to a variety pack in the links below. We're down to the purple thing, okay. This is called the purple thing. What do you do with the purple thing? A lots of stuff. Okay, it's called that purple thing, and I have a link to it. Uh, you can use this pointed in sometimes when you're sewing something and you're trying to get it up next to your needle. You can use this in the same way. The, it, there's just so many times when you need just to, you you need to stick your finger in there and your finger's too big, and in addition to that, you don't want to sew on your finger. Even if this should happen to break or if you've got it right up under there and you rub the needle, that's a whole lot better than getting a needle all the way through your hand. I put a, an entire needle through my finger one time. So, uh, I like the purple thing. And I think you need a good pair of tweezers. Now, I've linked some, but any kind of pair of tweezers will work. There are times when you have that little thread down there and you just can't get your fingers on it and you can pull it up with a pair of tweezers and especially when there's some uh, thread caught right in the the dog feet of your machine this is easy to get in there and get it out okay that is all of section two of this video which is your notions okay comments below questions i try to get back to you as quick as possible and now we're going to go to the third section Okay, here we are on section three. This is the section where we're going to talk about fabrics, interfacing, and bonding, iron-on bonding. Um, I'm talking to you about fabrics first. Let me tell you that there's a big difference between cheap fabric and good fabric. And good fabric can be inexpensive sometimes, but cheap fabric can also be expensive. So we're not talking about the price. I want you to consider the quality and you almost need to feel some fabric. So if you go to the fabric store, feel around at some thin fabrics. Um, do some, some that are a little thicker. You're going to find your best quality fabrics most of the time at a good fabric or quilt shop. Um, I don't have any quilt shops close to me. Um, I don't have a Hobby Lobby close to me. I don't have a Joann's close to me. I live in the boonies, but I have plenty of fabric. So I have plenty of fabric. Um, now, that doesn't mean I won't go out and buy more. And if you're just starting out, you may not have this kind of a stash. So where are you going to get some fabric without breaking the bank? Let me tell you, first of all, where uh, don't, don't if you're making a project that you want to look expensive, don't use a cheap fabric. It, it won't work. Um, so it, it depends on your project and what weight of fabric you want. But where can I get something that is very inexpensive but still good? Try your thrift thrift shops 
okay? Now, they're not going to have a sign that says fabrics over here. Uh, but what the, you, every piece of clothing in there is some kind of fabric. Don't walk around looking only at your size. Don't walk around looking only in the women's section. Go browse through the men's section. Go, through the, through all, go up and down every aisle with clothes. You're not looking for the way the garment's made. You're not looking for um, the size. You're looking at the fabric. And there's going to be something that will grab your eye. And then ask yourself, what can I make with this? Um, but one thing is if you're doing some patchwork quilts, say you wanted to do some plaids, go to the men's section pretty cheap now how can you get some something just like that but for free clean out your closet we all have outfits we'd never wear anymore your husband probably has plaid shirts and dress shirts and that he doesn't wear uh maybe they have a spot on the front is the back of it still good uh can you applique over that if you cut a, a square of that fabric from that shirt could you applique over that spot? You have fabric sitting right in your house that you probably don't even know. Hey, look what I found in Steve's closet. Some plaid shirts, and these colors will go well together in a quilt. Here's some more plaid. Oh, look at this striped blue. That's gonna go good with this. these over here. And then I found some a solid colored shirt too. These are gonna be great. I can't wait to use all of these. Look at all the fabric that I found. It was all just hanging in Steve's closet. Hey, those are my good shirts. Oops, I may be in trouble. Oh well, I'm not scared. Back to fabrics. So these are some ideas of where you can get, get by. Um, look, uh, look in your linen closet. Uh, I use old sheets. Uh, for practice, uh, I and I sometimes use them of uh, almost like an interfacing and a backing, just to give stability to a thinner piece of fabric. So these are some things you can do um, to be able to get you some some fabric. And of course, you're going to want to go to a fabric store or a quilt shop and look around at all the pieces. Don't get carried away, because I do. Okay. Um, you also might need interfacing from time to time. I'm not going to go into the different interfacings with you on here because that is usually going to be project specific. So um, it would depend on your fabric and your project. If you have a question about if you're doing something and it calls for interfacing and you have a question, please send me a comment. Uh, I, I, I don't mind. Um, but read your directions of whatever you're doing and it will if it wants interfacing it's going to tell you what you need to get now there is one thing that i think as a, if you're doing this as crafting that you would like to have and that is heat and bond and i have a link to this you can buy heat and bond in a small package like this which i have linked or you can buy it by the boat or by the yard you will use heat and bond when you do applique. Okay, this is the beginning of section four. Section four are just some other things you might like. Some other things you might need. A small vacuum. We use a small, what you call handheld vacuum. Um, and we keep it in the sewing room. I keep one in the sewing room, we keep one downstairs. It's very good for cleaning up areas that you have. And it's good to, you can usually have a nozzle that'll help get vacuum stuff out of your sewing machine. Do not use one of these air sprays like you use to clean your computer board. Do not use that down in your sewing machine because what you're doing is that is just air. And it's blowing the dust out okay and that's going to blow the dust further up into your machine but if you have a little vacuum and can get it down in there that's going to suck that those little pieces of lint and stuff out now what else can you do with those pieces of lint? i keep uh you can use a pipe cleaner and use just use that to kind of rub down rub down in your machine and and um pick up some of the dust um okay the other two things, and these aren't for you, uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of crafts, you're probably going to want a glue gun and some glue sticks. So look into that if you don't already have it. If you're a crafter, you probably have that. Um, it, while you're sewing, you may need some zippers, you may need some hooks and eyes, you may need some snaps. I'm not going to go into all of that, but if you're looking for the zippers that I like, 
uh, I will put a link to those uh, below um, in, in this the video so um, I buy I like to buy them in a bulk package and I buy like a 22 inch zipper and I buy multicolors. And by buying a bundle, I get them pretty inexpensive. If I want a specific thing for a specific project, then I go get that. But if I'm doing something and I need a zipper real quick, I wanna have some on hand. So there you go. There are the supplies and the sewing machine that I recommended for my friend. And I hope that this helps you. I'd be more than happy to uh, entertain any of your questions uh, so you can comment on my Facebook page, my web page, and my YouTube. All of them are under the name Come Hobby With Us. ComeHobbyWithUs.com and same on Facebook and the YouTube. I know on YouTube it wants to bring up several things, but just keep putting it in there till you get it. Okay. Um, and so that, that concludes our list of supplies that you need if you're starting out as a beginner sewer crafter and you don't have all these supplies on here. I hope you enjoyed this and please leave me some comments. Thank you. Hey fellow crafters, thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I know it's a bit on the longer side, but I wanted to make sure you have all the info you need to kick off your crafting journey with confidence. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed to my channel and if you gave me a thumbs up. Be sure and visit our webpage where I have some downloadable patterns for free.